Welcome to the Wright Mobile Consultant videos. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to set your building materials in load preferences through the detail screen. To begin, we'll select on the details menu at the top of the screen. The first row is your wall type and your R value. The wall types are the following. You have framed, masonry, insulated concrete form, structural insulated panel, log walls, aerated autoclaved concrete, 8 inch brick or concrete, and 4 inch concrete. On the right hand side is your R value. This is the cavity R value, anything from R0 to R21. To the right is an arrow that represents details, so this row has wall details. Tap over the arrow and you can select your detailed frame wall construction such as exterior board insulation, your exterior type, and your framing material. When you are finished, press done. The next row here is the basement wall type and the R value. This only applies if you have a conditioned basement. If it's an unconditioned basement, leave it at none. If you do apply a basement wall type, it will automatically get applied to the first level that you drew from the footprint. The basement wall type options are block, 8 inch concrete or block, 4 inch concrete, insulated concrete form wall, and plywood. When you do select a basement wall type, the insulation options will appear on the right hand side. There's two R values here. The first one is board insulation. The second R value is the cavity insulation when you frame out a wall in your basement. The details to the right opens up your detailed basement wall construction. The first row is your board insulation depth below grade, the core of your block walls, and how many feet below grade is this wall. When your basement is partially below grade, choose the average below grade depth. When finished, press done. I'm going to change my basement wall type back to none. The next row is our ceiling type and R value. Your ceiling options are flat, sloped, vented attic, unvented attic, encapsulated attic, and conditioned space. Encapsulated attics are one of the newest ceiling types within Manual J. This refers to an attic when the roof and the walls of the attic are completely sealed off and insulated. The insulation here is the cavity insulation from R0 to R44. Press over the details arrow for the ceiling. And in this screen here you choose your roof material, your roof color, radiant barrier only if it applies, and your deck construction. Once finished, press the done button. The next row is the floor type in R value. Your floor types are exterior. A good example of this is when a floor cantilevers the lower floor so it's exposed to the outdoor air. Basement tight, basement leaky, crawl space tight, crawl space leaky, below grade, on grade, and over conditioned space. To the right of the floor type, you have your R value from 0 to 38. Tap over the floor details arrow icon and this opens up your detailed floor construction where you can choose your floor finish and after you've made your selection select done. The next row down is your window type and to the far right is your window details. Choose your default window construction type from the drop down menu and then press over the details icon to the far right. In this screen you can choose your default window type your frame material, storm if it applies, internal shading if that applies and if it does enter in the internal shading percent closed, your configuration, your foreground, this describes the ground type outside of the window, insect screen if it applies and then the percent coverage, external sunscreen shading coefficient, the best example here is a window laminate that's applied to the outside of your window. This reduces the amount of solar gains that pass through the window. 
For example, if you had one that was rated at 80%, meaning 80% of the light passes through, 20% of the sunlight is blocked, you would type in 0, 0.80 and then enter in the percent coverage here. For this example, I'll change it back to 1. If you know what the solar heat gain coefficient and the U value for the window, check off NFRC rated and type in the solar heat gain coefficient, the heating U value, and the cooling U value. Once you're finished, press done. The next row is your door type. Choose your door type and then choose the area for that door. This area will be the combined area for all of your solid doors. Select the arrow icon to open up your door details. Select your storm door application and then press done. The next row is your skylight type in the area. Choose your skylight type, then type in the area if it applies. Press over the skylight arrow to the far right to open up the skylight details. In this screen, you can choose your sash type, your curb type, your light shaft, internal shading, orientation, inclination, which is the angle or the pitch of the skylight, and if you know what the exact NFRC rating is, you will select the checkbox and type in your solar heat gain coefficient, your heating U value, and your cooling value. Select done when finished. The next row here is auto glass area percent. This is how Wright Mobile Consultant calculates the total square area for each window for each orientation. This can be calculated by wall area or by floor area. Don't forget, you can change each individual window from the footprint screen after you switched from room mode to window mode. The last row in the detail screen is the actual glass area. As you make manual adjustments from the footprint screen, Wright Mobile Consultant will calculate the actual glass area. The zip code here is carried over automatically from the customer information screen. Select the details button to review or to modify the indoor and outdoor temperatures. If necessary, you can override the temperatures using these checkboxes. When finished, press done. The building materials in the detail screen are taken as the current construction for every level in the footprint, for the exception of the floors and ceilings that have a drawn out level above it or below it. Every selection and change made in this screen is immediately calculated to the load. If the window details are changed here, this will not affect the windows that were manually changed from the footprint. Let's now take a look at the load details at the bottom of the screen. Scroll down, select the I button, scroll back up. This is where you can change your occupants and your appliances. If the number of occupants living in the house is unknown, take the number of bedrooms plus one and that will be your minimum number of occupants. The appliances and plants to the right have a details arrow and this is where you can choose your default scenario for your standard appliances, add additional BTUs for other appliance loads as well as latent loads and enter in the number of plants at the bottom. Select done when finished. Next is your duct losses and your duct gains. Select the arrow to the far right hand side. Start by selecting your duct location for your supply in your return, the options are conditioned space, unvented attic, vented attic, encapsulated attic, open crawl space, enclosed crawl space, vented leaky, enclosed crawl space tight, unconditioned basement vented leaky, unconditioned basement tight, garage doors closed, under slab and exterior wall. The next line down is your roof materials, roof color, radiant barrier if it applies, and your configuration. This refers to the location of your outlets. Radial represents a spider layout. You have perimeter outlets, center of room outlets, trunk and branch perimeter outlets, and trunk and branch center of room. Choose the most appropriate configuration for your ducts. For the return configuration you have a drop down to the far right, the options are radial, close to unit, trunk and branch, and trunk and branch close to unit. The difference between radial and radial close to unit is when you have one central return that is close to unit. 
when you have multiple returns in a radial configuration that's radial. The same rule applies for trunk and branch. When you have a central trunk and branch return, you choose trunk and branch close to unit. When you have multiple returns in a trunk and branch configuration, you choose trunk and branch. And then choose your duct sealing, extreme, notable, average, partial, and unsealed. Next is your insulation R value. This is the insulation that wraps around the ductwork. Your choices are 2, 4, 6, 8, and 0. Next is your heating discharge air temperature. This temperature is typically 100 degrees to 120 degrees for a heat pump and 120 degrees to 140 degrees for a furnace. Once finished, select Done. Next is your room height. This room height is applied to every level within the footprint. Use an average room height to compensate for spaces or levels that have vaulted ceilings. Below this is your HVAC systems. Select the arrow key to the right. You can check off for blower heat if the blower is not already reduced from the system's cooling capacity. If it's not already compensated for, check it off and type in the blower heat in watts to the right hand side. If it's already compensated for, leave it unchecked. The next is heating humidification. Check this off if you have a bypass humidifier. If you do not have a humidifier, leave it unchecked. For steam humidifiers, also leave it unchecked. The next row here is atmospheric combustion. Check this off if you have either a furnace, a boiler, or a domestic hot water system that uses the surrounding air for combustion. The surrounding air specifically is within the envelope of the home. If it's outside of the envelope of the home, like an attic or a vented crawl space, you do not check it off. When you are finished, press Done. The next row below HVAC systems is infiltration. The choices are average, tight, semi-tight, semi-loose, and loose. Here you're making an educated decision on how tight the home is. Make your selection and then select the number of stories to the right. The number of stories refers to the above grade stories, not below grade. Select the details arrow to the right of the number of stories. This is where we can set our number of fireplaces, fireplace quality, and the fresh air CFM per person. When finished, select Done. The last row here is ventilation. There are three options for ventilation. No ventilation at all, automatic, or manual. Set the ventilation to auto if you want it to automatically calculate the amount of CFM to bring in for ventilation. If you want to change the amount of CFM, set it to manual. To modify the ventilation details, select the details bracket to the far right, and this is where you can choose between raw outdoor air, HRV, or ERV, and ventilating dehumidifier. When it's an HRV or an ERV, you can type in the sensible effectiveness for your heating and for your cooling. When it's an ERV, you apply the sensible effectiveness as well as the latent effectiveness. HRV just applies to the sensible effectiveness. When you're finished, press Done. And when you are finished with this screen, select Done. And this concludes our video. For all of your technical inquiries, please contact our support department at 781-862 8719 extension 2. To purchase or renew your Wright Mobile Consultant license, please contact our sales department at 1-800-225-8697 extension 3. You can also visit us on the web at www.rightsoft.com. Thank you for watching.